From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas based on the famous theatrical books begun by the late Burns Mantle. Now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Our play this evening, Outward Bound, dates back to the season of 1923-24. That seems a long time ago, and maybe it is. But when some of the plays of that season come to mind, it seems like only yesterday, for a fine play never shows its age and remains vivid in the memory. There were some good plays that season. George Kelly's The Show-Off, for instance. Max Reinhardt's historic production of The Miracle. There was a fantasy by George Kaufman and Mark Connolly, Beggar on Horseback, which is fondly remembered. Kaufman and Connolly also had a musical going that time, called Helen of Troy, New York, about a collar factory. Those were the days when men wore detached collars on their shirts, and the symbol of manly beauty was the man in the arrow collar advertisements. I can remember one song from that show. I won't sing it now because I can't sing. Its refrain was, the biggest fools that you can meet are here on 42nd Street in old New York. Well... I'm sure that the most vividly and most fondly remembered drama from that season is Sutton Vane's Outward Bound. Sutton Vane, an English actor and playwright, was named for his father, who specialized in melodramas. Outward Bound, as you will soon hear, is no melodrama, but an odd and absorbing play. Our company includes Gina Dare, Alexander Scorby, Susan Douglas, Chester Stratton, Leona Powers, and John Stanley. Imagine now, as the play begins, that we are aboard what seems to be a small ocean liner, and that in just a few moments our ship will be sailing outward bound. I beg your pardon? Oh, good morning, ma'am. You're the steward, aren't you? That's right, ma'am. I'm sorry to bother you, but the fog's so thick, I'm afraid we've lost our way. Where do you want to get to, ma'am? Our cabin. Ooh, you'll find all the berths followed. Oh, thank you. Henry? Yes, darling? It's this way. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the sea. What'd you say? Our cabin's forward, he told me. Oh, thank you, steward. A bit confusing, these boats, aren't they? Yes, sir. To begin with. Come along, dear. I'm awfully tired. Do you wonder, after what you've been through? I suppose not. But we'll have a wonderful trip, won't we? Yes, dear. The rest and the peace and the forgetfulness. Of course, dear. Don't worry. Give me your hand. I'm sure you'll have a pleasant trip, sir, if you'll excuse me. Cheer, all the neighbors cried. Who are you going to meet? Well, have you bought the street? Well, you've you? been a long time. Oh, good morning, sir. This is the smoke room, isn't it? Yes, sir. What good is a smoke room without a bar? Exactly, sir. What shall I get you? Whiskey. No soda, Walter? No, 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 no. Thank you. All whiskey. As a matter of fact, you'll probably see a lot of me during this trip, so we might as well get acquainted, eh? How much? Oh, you needn't pay on this ship, sir. Hmm? Hey, if you'll just sign this check. No. Oh. Oh, had a thick night last night. Indeed, sir. Must have been devilish thick. I can't remember anything about it now. Well, it's a good morning, anyway. It is, sir. A pity some people should be alive to spoil it. Hmm? What's that? Uh, I, I was talking to myself, sir. Hmm. What's the old captain like on this tub? Very decent sort, I've heard, sir. Very respected. I know. Oh, that sounds dull. Get me another, will you, the same? Uh -huh. I thought I knew that voice. What? Oh, really? 
So here you are, you naughty boy. Well, Mrs. Cliveden Banks, how are you? What a surprise. <laughs> as soon as I saw Tom Pryor on the passenger list, I asked for the bar, and here you are. Well, uh, what are you doing here? Joining my dear husband, I'm we're in for a very dull trip. Well, we must just try and cheer each other up then, Mrs. Banks. Uh, by the way, darling, my name is Mrs. Cliveden hyphen Banks. <laughs> there was a plain Mrs. Banks in the divorce court lately. So silly of her and so plain. Plain? Well, judging the Daily Mirror. A total stranger, of course. Still, it's made me very particular about my hyphen. Not that I am ever likely to appear in the divorce court. Oh, no, no, of course not. Uh, well, Mrs. Cliveden Banks, will you have a drink? At this time in the morning? Goodness, no. Uh, Mr. Pryor... Did you realize there was a clergyman on board? Oh, how convenient. Part of the ship's service, eh? Well, heavens no, a passenger. And everyone knows a clergyman is the worst possible luck at sea. Uh, look out, sir. Speak of the devil. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Uh, Mr. Pryor, who is this man? Hmm? Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, let me see now. Where was I? Uh, I'm awfully sorry to bother you, madam, but... Uh... Uh, could you tell me what the date is? I, I have this letter and I... Are you trying to start a conversation with me? <laughs> well, frankly, when we are going to be shipmates, the sooner we get to know each other, the better, don't you think? I'm William Duke. No, oh, really, I couldn't care less. <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't think introductions were necessary aboard ship. Well, possibly they may not have been in the days of Sir Walter Raleigh. Not having been there myself, I can't say for certain. I, I beg your pardon. I I'll go out on deck. Good day, sir. <laughs> Fancy that clergyman pushing his way like that. I I cut him rather neatly, don't you think? To the bone. Well, good heavens, we're besieged on all sides. Look at that. Uh, you'll excuse me, Mum, uh, but you're the only other lady I've seen about, barring myself. And I've got to say something to someone. You see, Mum, I've been struck all of a heap. You've been what? Struck all of a heap. Oh, Mr. Pryor, rescue me. And you'd better do something with this good woman, too. It seems she's been struck all of a heap, whatever that may mean. Well, uh, what's the trouble? Well, sir, it went like this, as it were. Only last Saturday, Mrs. Roberts and me were talking about the sheets being damp. Of sheets being damp? Oh, the good woman is obviously a steward. Oh, no, Mum, no. I'm a passenger. A passenger? Good heavens, Mr. Pryor, tell that steward to tell someone to take the good woman back to her proper place immediately. She's been wandering. She's, she's on the wrong deck. She's in the wrong class. Um, goodbye, good woman. Goodbye. Thank you, Mum. Now, uh, steward, would you get someone to show this woman to the third class deck or something? Third class, sir? Mm -hmm. I think you made some mistake, sir. There's only one class on the boat. What was that? Only one class? Yes, sir. It's the same on all this line. Oh, Mr. Pryor, this is impossible. And now, how am I to know who are the ladies and gentlemen and who are not? No, no, no. Don't get excited. Excited? Why, why, why this woman, this woman here, she, she probably eats... Extremely uh, likely, I should say. Well, then, if she eats and if there's only one class, she'll eat in the same place as we shall. Well, it just can't be done. Now, there's no point in getting upset. It would be quite impossible for me to lunch at the same table with a woman who has been struck all of a heap. Well, I'll see what I can do. Now, uh, madam, uh, what's your name? Uh, Midget. <laughs> What? Midget. There, yeah, that to begin with is an alibi. No one could possibly be named Midget. Oh, couldn't I? Well, I'll show you whether they sh could or not. I'm a la my lady, I am mighty. My name's Midget, all right. Midget married me, and I've got me lines to prove it. How dreadfully sordid. We're just trying to help. Now, what is your trouble? Are you ill? Am I ill? I don't think so. I don't feel ill. And yet I said to Mrs. Roberts last Thursday, or was it Wednesday? Oh, never mind, I says it to her anyways. I says, what I want, says I. Or did she say it to me? Oh, well, one of us says it to the other. What I or you want, according to whichever one of us did say it, is a thorough holiday. And then, oh, wait a minute. I remember now. It's all coming back. I've been um, on here to meet somebody. Oh, that's it, is it? Yes, at the other end. It was our parson's idea. A thorough holiday, of course. Oh, how silly of me to forget. I'm supposed to be here to meet somebody. But I can't remember who. Perhaps that's because I ain't had anything to eat all day. The woman is obviously light-headed. Have her removed. Steward, can you find this passenger's stewardess for her and have her put in charge? 
She's nervous. You see, never having been at sea. Certainly. This way, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. Seems harmless enough. I suspect she's one of a gang of international crooks. Look at the way she scraped acquaintance with me. Well, I suppose that means we're sailing shortly. Oh, then I shall go up deck and wave farewell to the dear old white cliffs. I'm told that on many parts of the coast they're crumbling fast, but still, England, England, there is no country like her. Thank goodness. Uh, why do you say that? Well, that's what other countries say. Oh. Well, well come along now and, and protect me from the mob. Uh, no, thanks. I'd far rather remain here and slip away from my native land, oblivious of her disregard for me. Oh, you're a naughty boy, Tom Pryor. Still, <laughs> I'll see you later. That you, Reverend? I beg your pardon. It's Tom Pryor. I want to apologize. Whatever for? Oh, cutting you stone dead like that silly old woman I was with. Well, that's all right. If she had some idea you were bad luck. It was ridiculous of me to play along with her, but of course I, I'm a very weak character. Strong of you to admit it. No, I, I'm easily swayed. I can't think why. Drink? Uh, I always carry emergency rations. Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, that's my problem. I always agree with anyone I'm with. She was to blame entirely. I've always found it an unwise habit to run down other people. They have a nasty way of hearing about it and retaliating. Well, you're not going to preach a sermon, are you? Oh, goodness, no. No more sermons for me for a bit. I'm sick of them. Never did any good. I think that we should all enjoy ourselves on this trip, don't you? Hmm? Uh, live every minute of it. Well, if you mean something like a cold bath before breakfast, I don't. Oh, no, but we must arrange to enjoy every moment of the trip. Why? Because we're meant to. Oh? We must organize among ourselves. For instance, we'll get up a concert. Well, must we get up a concert? But of course. How awful. I say, do you sing? No. Oh, that's a pity. Do you recite? No. That's excellent. You know, Reverend, as far as I'm concerned, all we need for the passenger's amusement is through that door. The bar? Precisely. Will you join me? If you like. Where's that steward? The steward isn't here, that's what. No efficiency, no efficiency. How do you do? My name's Lingley of Lingley Limited. Hooray. Where the devil's the steward? I haven't got time to waste here. I've got work to do. Steward! All oh, right, yes. Uh, Ginger ale with ice. Yes, sir. How much? You needn't pay, sir. I always pay. How much? One shilling, sir. Very well. Here's one shilling. Well, okay, sir. What for? I haven't tipped you. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I have work to do. I'm a member of Parliament, you know. Oh, pleased to meet you. Not at all. I'm on the London County Council as well. Incidentally, I own 21 music halls, a chain of cinemas, two gold mines, and a Methodist chapel. Naturally, they want looking after. Oh, naturally. Uh, what are you doing with the chapel? Having it pulled down. Sportsman. You. I know your face, don't I? Never forget a face. How that must sadden your sweet life a time. Where have I seen it before? Oh, in your office. You gave me a job that lasted two days. I couldn't stand the atmosphere, so I drowned it in drink. By Jove, I remember, I remember. You were sacked mechanically. Yes, you wouldn't give me a second chance. No one's ever given me a second chance. Never expect one. I shall certainly never ask for one. In my opinion, Mr. Lingley, MP, LCC, you are a pompous old idiot. How dare you? You must be crazy. I'm not in your ghastly office now. I can say what I like. You're a blue-nosed baboon. There, I've dreamed I've said that to you for weeks, and now I've said it. Mr. Pry, you're obviously drunk. Uh, I am drunk, I admit, but I trusted not obviously. I, I shall go on deck. Where are my papers? I've been irritated. The doctor said I must not be irritated. I have too much to do to be irritated. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Pryor didn't mean I it. did, I did, every word of it. But shut up, he's a pink-eyed rabbit. He's a rotter, he's a grasper. Silence, sir. For goodness sake, silence. I shan't be able to concentrate after this interruption. I came here for peace, confound you. I've been thinking too hard as it is, and now this little gnat, he's, he's destroyed what I've nearly completed in my mind. Confound you, sir, I'm sick of opposition. I... Oh, my God. Mr. Lingley, what is it? Wait. Wait. You're looking ill. Yes, I... I am ill. I'm... I'm feeling ill, I am. Suddenly, I must have help. I... I've been warned about this. An arm, please, and some of that stuff you're drinking, Pryor. Here you are. Thank you. I shall be all right in a minute. I'll get the ship's doctor. No, he'll only irritate me. I know what to do. I've been told what to do. Absolute quiet and fresh air. I'll go on deck. Oh, yes, I, I've forgotten. I'm to take one of these capsules. Thank you. I must keep quiet. 
calm and not think. I should be all right in a minute. I'll see a doctor when I get to. Get to. Uh, Marseilles, you said, sir? Oh, yes, of course, Marseilles. What am I going to Marseilles for? Don't worry now. No, no. Don't worry, that's right. I felt quite faint for the moment, Mr. Duke. Your drink has done me good. I know what I'm doing, of course. I I know. Already I'm better. I... <coughs> but where am I going to? I'm going to meet someone, but was it Aronson? Ben Top? <coughs> Don't look well, Mr. Lingley. Of course not, of course not. He irritated me. I shall go on deck. I don't feel well at all. I can't concentrate. I can't remember where I'm going. Reverend, what was it? I don't know. Some sort of attack. I'm going to stop him. Uh, Reverend. Well? It was my fault, I suppose. Oh, no. I... Are you angry with me? Oh, why should I be? You know, I... I think I'll have another drink. But you've had enough. You promised no sermons. Prior, drink is a terrible thing. Reverend, you're keen on group games and concerts. Drink is my hobby. Let's leave it at that. Please don't joke about it. Oh, man, I take drinking very seriously indeed. Well, I'll see you later, Prior. If I should see if Mr. Lingley's all right. Uh, just a moment. What is it? Has it struck you by any chance that there's something queer about this boat? No, it hasn't. Well, it has me. How do you mean? There was a charwoman here just now, hardly the kind of person you'd expect to find here, and... She couldn't remember where she was going, except that she was going to meet someone. Now, this Lingley fellow, he couldn't remember where he was going either. At least not clearly. And there's old Mrs. Banks, driveling about joining her husband. It's just struck me that... What has? Can't have applied when Banks kicked the bucket months ago. Surely she can't have forgotten that. Or was that her, her father? Mr. Pryor, if you'll take my advice, you'll take Mr. Lingley's example and take some fresh air on deck. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I think I will. I, I think I need some air. A lot of air. A lot of air. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't see you. I can't see much of anything. Uh, you all right? Look here. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Uh, of course not. It's a rather queer one. Go on. Do you know where you're going? Are you a Salvation Army man? I'm quite serious. Well, of course I know where I'm going. On this boat? Certainly. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank you. I, I'm going to get some fresh air. Who was that, Henry? Uh, I don't know. We're sailing now. Really? Almost open water. Give me your hand. Oh, hold tight to it. It's queer. I... Just like an ordinary sailing. Is it? You know, that man just now. He asked me if I knew where I was going. Yes. Funny question, wasn't it? I don't know. Look, Anne, I'm worried. I've been thinking just now, th these modern inventions doctors have... Please don't worry. Th they couldn't possibly call us back even now, could they? Oh, of course not. How could they? We're safe enough as long as we hold tight. Oh, it was a risk, though, wasn't it? Yes, dear. I think you were always more certain than I was. You seem to know so much more about the big things than I do. Perhaps I only pretend to. Oh, I am. Darling, I do love you. I love you, Henry. Always. Always. I wonder how the dog is. Oh, you baby. They'll look after him, all right? I hope so. And when dogs die, what do you think happens to them? Oh, I don't know. There must be a heaven for dogs. At least I hope so. No, it's queer. And you don't think... What? Any of these people could possibly know. Our secret? Of course they can't. Oh, I, I wonder if it's safe, even now. What makes you say that? And, darling, could they separate us? I'm trying so hard to remember. Suppose we'd done something that isn't... Uh, isn't right. They couldn't separate us then, could they? That sort of thing is all over now, Henry. You've forgotten our secret. Oh, you know I haven't. But I, I remember it just before we left the flat. Our oh, sad little flat. I, I forgot to turn off the gas. Of course you did, Henry. We agreed to that. That's what we agreed. But they couldn't separate us for that, could they? 
I wish I could remember how we got here. I know we wanted for so long. Now we're here. Let's walk around the deck, Henry. All right. Uh, oh. Hello. Hello. I didn't see you standing there. I know. Well, if, if you'll excuse us. Come along. I was right. Steward. Yes, sir. What's your name? Scrubby, sir. I am right, aren't I, Scrubby? Right, sir. In the end, sir. You know what I mean. What about what, sir? You, I, all of us on this boat. What about all of us on this boat, sir? Answer me truthfully, Scrubby. We're all dead, aren't we? Yes, sir. We're all dead. Quite dead. They don't find out so soon as you did as a rule. Queer. Not when you get used to it, sir. But how long have you been... Me, sir? Well, I was lost young. You were what? Lost young, sir. I don't understand. No, sir, you wouldn't. Not yet. But you'll get to know lots of things as the voyage goes on. Tell me one thing now. Anything I can, sir. What are we sailing for? Heaven, sir. And hell, too. It's the same place, you see. Well, Mrs. Banks, I could tell you one thing. This line can't be paying anything at dividends. There's nobody on board. Nobody who is anybody. How about that couple at dinner who sat at the corner? A girl's name is uh, Anne, I think. Oh, that couple? Yeah. Did you like the look of them? Didn't notice. I thought there was something funny about them. Funny? Well, you know. I may be wrong. I hope I am. <laughs> but that's my opinion. Not nice. Funny. Right, Miss May I come in? Of course. It's a bit lonely on the street. Street? Uh, out there. Oh, she means the deck. How quaint. Oh, sit down. There. You're not nervous now, are you? Not with you, sir. You wear just the same sort of collar that our parson does. Oh, I wish I was back on Lambeth Road. Oh, impossible. Mr. Lingley, I shall squash her. Fancy her crowding in here. And Mrs. Midget, I suppose you travel a great deal. Oh, yes. Every day. Lambeth to the bank and from the bank back to Lambeth. Working in the city as I did, did I do. The city, how enthralling. <laughs> Big financial interests, I presume. No, scrubbing floors, since I lost all my money. Do you know all of you? Believe me or believe me not, I once had a house of my very own. How magnificent. Oh, wasn't it? Semi-detached. Took in lodgers, you know. Uh, Made enough to make me son a gentleman anyway. Sent him to college to prove it. <laughs> How romantic. Oh, Cambridge or Oxford? Perhaps I've met him. Well, Where is he now? I don't rightly know. Having become a gentleman, he naturally lost all his money. And his money was my money. I ain't seen him since. He ain't seen me, not to know me since he was a very little boy. I got my brother-in-law, he's rich, to take him over and manage things for me. Oh, he's been a good boy. Mm, sounds it. He was, I tell you. A real gentleman. Just like that, Mr. Pryor. That's what gentlemen are really like. Always broke, bless him, and then having another one just to make him forget about it. Just like that, Mr. Pryor. <laughs> Pryor, who? Well, I like him anyway. Poor Mr. Pryor. And I hear he's always like that nowadays. A real bad lot, in fact. Oh, where is he now, I wonder, Mr. Langley? Sleeping it off if he's a wise man, which he isn't. <laughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Pryor. Why, Mr. Pryor, we were just talking about you. Indeed? Yes, I was saying what a steady hand. Don't you... waste any more of your breath than is necessary, Mrs. Clive and Banks. Nor any of you here. I beg your pardon. You don't have to believe me if you don't want to, but it's true all the same. We're dead people. Why, oh, really, what Pryor? Did you Why say? don't you well, sleep it all? I'm well, sober enough now. Heaven. I'll walk a chalk line on the floor well, if you like. Oh, uh, why doesn't someone put the young man to bed? It, it'd be much kinder. Well, I'm so. sober, I tell you. I began to suspect it this morning before lunch. Nobody seemed to remember where they were going. I didn't remember for a minute where I was going. Then I remembered, then I got drunk. 
Naturally, all my life I've started to face facts by getting drunk. Look, I've been all over the ship, into the officers' quarters and everything. There's no one on board. No captain, no crew, no nothing. There's no one on board. Boy, I've never heard no of one but the man. steward. The man is losing and you know where he is now? He's in the rigging. No. Sitting cross-legged up in the rigging. I've just seen oh, him. No, really, no, Price. No, you don't believe me, eh? Like all right. All right. Whom have you seen on board ship since you sailed? Mrs. Midget, who helped you this morning? The steward. He got me a nice hot cup of tea. You, Reverend. Whom have you spoken to? Well, really, I, I have seen men about, of course. Have you? Have you indeed? Have you spoken to anyone? Well, you don't expect us to talk to sailors, do you, Mr. Pryor? Able-bodied, though they may be. Uh, <laughs> did you see the engine room? No. I couldn't find it. Oh, pity. I thought you were going to say the ship was worked by elastic bands. <laughs> it's no joke. Reverend, where are you landing? Well, I, I'm going to take a little holiday, that's all. You can't remember? I'm right, you see. I wish you'd get out there. We want to play cards. Why, I should try to warn you, I don't know, but I've been all over this ship, I tell you. Oh, excuse me. You're just in time, the two of you. Come in. Henry, I don't think we'd better. Come in. You know. You knew this morning. Knew what? Henry, don't talk to him. It frightens me. Yes, yes, I suppose I do. I know as well, you see. <laughs> Mr. Duke, as a clergyman, you must be more used to unpleasantness than anyone else. Will you please take this man to the doctor or lock him up? He's not worth... I tell you, there is no doctor, no one. Look, everyone, I'll make a bargain with you. What is it? There are no lights out there. No lights at all. Have you ever heard of a ship with no port or starboard oh, lights? No, 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 no. Go out there and see. If I'm wrong, I'll go quietly. Well, no, that seems fair. Reverend, will you go? Well, just to satisfy you, if you keep your word... And you'll tell the truth? Of course. Weak. Weak. Shouldn't humor him. Don't you run the church down. Take my advice. You may want to help very badly before I long. I simply ignore you, Mr. Pryor. Listen, listen. You hear that? Like a drum. A muffled drum. You're drunk, sir, and you're at the wrong... Well, Duke? What's out there? It's all right, of course. Duke? It is all right? Of course. Everything? Everything. Oh, well, well of I course. Take the I knew it all the time. You liar. You liar. Come with me, Duke. I'll show you. Stop it, Pryor. Stop it. You swore to tell the truth. You're a liar. A dirty liar. Get him, Lingley. I'll show him no more lies. I'm trying to help. We're dead, do you hear? We're all dead. Uh, you all right, Pryor? Uh, you be quiet. Now... The ladies are safely out of the way. I want to apologize, Pryor. Why? Because you were right. Oh. What? There isn't a light on board. I'm not even certain that we're moving. Then why didn't you say so? I didn't want to alarm the ladies. But something must be done. We must all do something immediately. What? To begin with, somebody will have to ring a bell. Yes, yes, and have the steward explain. Good. Scrubby, ask him. We ought to do something. We may be drifting. We'll, we'll hit a rock. No, no, sir. You won't do that. Where did you come from? What's all this nonsense? I can't stand excitement. Where's the captain? Oh, uh, he left long ago, sir. When I get back to London, I'll... I'm afraid you won't get back to London, sir. Take me to the captain, sir. You're only a servant, you hear? Mr. Lingley, I think we should all keep our tempers. That's all right. I've known a lot of them to get angry at first. What do you mean, sir? People like you are just beginning. Beginning? To be passengers. Well, what you told me this morning was true, wasn't it? What? Dead, sir? Quite dead, sir. Speak for yourself, sir. It's queer. Why, sir? We didn't think it was queer when we were born. I must get out of this. I must get out. That, sir, is impossible until after the examination. What examination? You'll find out later, sir. Well, don't stand there, all of you, saying nothing. What are we to do? You, Duke, you're always talking about doing things. What are we to do? Uh, I really don't know. Of course, if we were all quite certain, our prayer... That won't do any good. There's no danger, gentlemen, if that's what you're frightened of. I'm not frightened. Well, I am. Stuart. How many times have you made this passage? Oh, about 5,000 times, sir. And it's always been like this? Not always, sir. The passengers don't find out so quickly as a rule. I suppose it's because of the halfways we have got on board this trip. Halfways? Now, there's no point standing here talking to a lunatic. The question is, what is to be done? There's nothing to be done. 
Just go on as if nothing had happened until the examination. Don't talk to me as if I were a schoolboy. It is rather like going to school, sir. I'm asleep. That's it. I'm just asleep. I've had dreams like this before. Go away, all of you. I'm Lingley of Lingley Limited. Not one of you can touch me. I turned myself into a company several years ago. Stuart. I am asleep, aren't I? Yes, sir. If you like, sir. Then I shall go away somewhere until I wake up. I'll wake up. I'll get out of this. I'd better go look after him, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me. Well, well. You know, I'm I'm quite a young man, and there is such a lot of work to be done after my holiday. You still won't believe it, will you? Yeah, try some of this whiskey. No, thanks. I don't think I will, if you'll excuse me, in case we meet anyone. It's a great chance for you, isn't it? Professional advancement, I mean. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen, my wife, she's out there. You knew, didn't you? You knew all along. I knew nothing. I know nothing now. Good night. Anne. What Anne. is it? Anne, come here. I'm with you, Henry. Listen, darling. They know we're dead. They found out our secret. I know. What will they do to us? They won't separate us, will they? <laughs> In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Outward Bound on Best Plays. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. We return to the Best Plays production of Outward Bound by Sutton Vane. And here again is John Chapman. This is the story of a strange voyage and of an extraordinary company of shipmates who suddenly discover that their mysterious vessel is bearing them to the land of death, across the black waters, perhaps, of the River Styx, outward bound. You're late, Pryor. You're late. You're all late. Late for what? The meeting. Where's Duke? On deck. Might interest you to know we've just sighted land. You mean land? Really land? Yes, we've just sighted hell. It looks like quite a nice place from here. The Reverend has arranged the sweepstakes on the exact time it'll take us to get in. You know, he suddenly developed a sense of humor. Where is everybody? Oh, getting nervous, Lingley of Lingley Limited. Oh, be quiet. You have enough chairs, sir? Yes, 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 indeed. Here's a half crown for your trouble. Thank you, sir. What's the object of this meeting, anyway? Well, as a businessman, I've called it to talk things over. You would. You think that a good report and complete minutes would impress the examiner. Of course, you'll be the chairman. Naturally, I seem to be the only one qualified. Pryor, when I was a boy... Were you ever a boy? When I was a boy, I made my motto, try and rely on yourself. At 37, I made it rely on yourself. And at 47, rely on yourself absolutely. Because then if you fail, all your friends will only say it serves you right. No, uh, had you any friends at 47? Oh, I'm so sorry to be late. Uh, Did you hear me? Mrs. Cliveden Banks. Oh, is this chair for me? Why, thank you. Well, perhaps we'd better start. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lingley. Hello, Banky. Banky? Oh, yes, we're all dead and I can be quite natural. We can all do as we like now. Uh, Pryor, have you heard this one? I've been dying to spring this one for ages. There was a young girl from Hong Kong. Oh, I know that one. Yes, I overheard one of my choir boys reciting it in the vestry. Uh, suppose your bishop heard you. Impossible, I'm dead. Is this the meeting now? Well, now, now that we're all here, uh, we'd better begin. Ladies and gentlemen. Here, here. Be quiet. I was only thanking him for the compliment. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am a businessman. Quite. I have never done anything in my life without a reason. Oh, quite. I believe we should draw up a balance sheet. Quite. Now, if I may say so... Certainly, go right ahead. Sir, I... Order, please, order. I'll have whiskey and soda. Quite. Quite what? Well, I really don't know, just quite. Really, gentlemen, if I'm interrupted again, I shall say no more. Here, here. 
Look here, all of you. The only question is, are we dead or not? That is what I call this meeting to decide, Mr. Pryor. I don't care one way or the other. You wouldn't. Mrs. Midget, do you think you're dead or do you not? Uh, ladies and gents, all I want to know is this. If it has happened, it would greatly please me to know that I've been done proper. I beg your pardon? Oh, you know, the street, the neighbors, the sherry wine and cake and flowers. Uh, this is beside the point. Do you think you're dead or do you not? Oh, I leave it entirely up to you, sir. I take it in favor of the motion. Any objections? The motion is carried. Now, the next thing to decide is how to meet and talk to the examiner. You mean we want to get out of it if we can? If mm -hmm. we can. And if we can't, well, this examiner is bound to be a hard, stern businessman. In which case, I suggest that I am the best one fitted to deal with him. Suppose he isn't anything like that. Suppose he is... Really, the examiner. Yeah. Why not ask Scrubby? Scrubby. You want me, sir? Uh, steward, um, this examiner, what kind of a person is he? Well, I can't say. I, I don't know. It all depends. Exactly how should we approach him? Well, I've been asked that question nearly 5,000 times, sir. And I always say it's better to leave the approach to him. What's he like, Scrubby? He's the wind and the skies and the earth, sir. He knows the furthest eddy of the eye tied up to the remotest cove. He knows the simpleness of beauty and the evilest thoughts of the human mind. He'll know all your evil thoughts. If you'll excuse me now, please. A seagull has just fallen on the deck. I'm afraid it's broken its wing. If so, I must try and win. Well, we've uh, got to stick together. We've got to find some rational, business-like business way of approaching him, and I suggest you leave it all in my hands. Mr. Lingley, you can rely on me for one piece of information. Oh, thank you very much. I now entirely agree with Mr. Pryor for calling you a pompous old idiot. What? Just because I'm trying to do my duty? Your duty? You're rubbish. You're doing it because you're in a blue funk, and I don't blame you. I'm in a blue funk, too, but not so much as to make an utter ass of myself by trying to get out of this with balance sheets and board meetings. You want to try and impress this examiner with your cleverness, your business importance, your supposed interest in your fellow creatures. You're hoping to save your own skin that way, and I think it's pretty rotten. Oh, your reverence. Haven't you got just one word of help? Yes, what are you going to do, Duke, when the examiner comes? Well, I... I I've been trying to look into myself... Trying to weigh my past thoughtfully and humbly and seek out all the faults and try not to excuse them. I'm going to pray to be able to make one more prayer. But for myself, I'm not fit to pray for others. You won't pray for us, sir? No. No, I can't. We're just shipmates, you and I, trying to help one another. I'm not a captain any longer. I cannot pray for others. Perhaps the realization of that is the beginning of my punishment. I have lost my job. Well, I don't suppose it was worth much anyway. It is the most glorious job in the world. I suppose a man never knows he's incompetent until he's sacked. I can't understand that I ought to. It was my job, but I can't. It's heartbreaking. It's... Oh, give me a cigarette, Pryor. Well, let's get down to hard facts. I suggest... It's too late. Didn't you hear? What? What? The siren. I, I, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. Now, now, Pryor. I didn't, I didn't, but... I can feel something, though, can't you? No. The boat stopped. Exactly. We're in. No. No, I won't face it. I daren't. It's all been bluff on my part. Let me get away. Let me... We can none of us get away. We've stopped for good now. This is the judgment. Oh, it, it can't be. We're here in the smoke room of a liner. Why shouldn't it be here in the smoke room of a liner? Have any of us really ever troubled very much to think where and how and when it might be? We've got to stick together. Duke, man, you, you must pray, even if the words are meaningless. Don't desert duty at the last moment. We're in the night, and I want a prayer. I want a prayer from a man. I don't care if he's a clergyman or not. 
Oh, you ought to pray, Your Reverend. Yes, even if you can't understand what for, you you understand us. You really think I ought to, Mrs. Midget? Oh, yes, sir. Pardon the liberty. There's no harm in habits, if they're good habits. And prayer is a good habit. Forgive me, then, for I don't know... Oh, yes. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child. Children, pardon our simplicity. Suffer us to come to thee. God bless father and mother, Harriet. She was my nurse. All kind friends. Make me a good boy. Amen. <laughs> that was the first prayer I ever learned, so it's probably the finest. Say it to yourselves if you want to. And uh, uh, remember Harriet. She was a worthy soul. Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> Yes, yes, we know. The examiner's just come in on board. He's cut us alongside and he'll be with you in a second. There he is. Well, uh, hadn't we better stand up, all of us, uh, Mr. Lingley? What? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Everybody up. up. The examiner. Do you quiet? Hello! Hello! Hello there! I say, where's everyone? Where are you, Duke? Ah, there you are, Duke, my boy. Well, how are you? But, but it, it's old grease spot. Of course it is. Greasier than ever. Oh, oh this climate. Oh, glad to see you after all this time. Good to see you. Have a good passage? You're looking fit? Oh, grease spot. Thompson. Saw your name on the passenger list, so I hurried down to meet you. I've been up country. Oh, thank you. Well, how's everybody? How's Ferguson? Well, they, they've made him a bishop. Oh, they would. What's ever become of Maltby with the red hair and the, uh, the spectacles? Uh, Thompson, I'm delighted to see you and everything, of course, and dying to tell you everything afterwards, but can't you realize how at the moment we are terribly worried? Worried? Worried about what? The examiner. Oh, don't worry about that. I'm the examiner. You are? Well, I'm one of them anyway. You're under my orders now. I've fixed up lodgings for you, Duke. There's not much to go clean. It's near your work, right in the center of the parish. So you couldn't do better, Ref. Work? Thompson, you don't mean I haven't lost my job after all. Of course you haven't. You haven't started yet. You're just beginning. I've lost my job. Thank you. Thank you, God. I'll work harder now. I swear I will. Did you hear, everybody? I haven't lost my job. There, there, my boy. It's quite all right now. I'm glad to see they know each other so well. But what about us? This uh, might be a suitable moment to approach him. <clears throat> Sir, my name is Lingley, of Lingley. Go away. Uh, I thought this might be a good moment Will to... you please go away? Now, Duke, feeling better now? It, it means such a lot to me, you know. Oh, perfect, then. You might as well start by helping me with this bunch. It won't take long, and we can get on shore for dinner. All right, Scrubby, line them up outside. I'll take them one at a time. <laughs> Mr. Lingley. Well, come in. Sit down. Well? Well, sir? I'm Lingley of Lingley Limited. Never mind the limited. You're just Lingley now. I'm very proud of being myself. Very well, your case is over. Get out. What? Just a minute. Let's talk this over. It's just that you don't understand business. Sir, you commenced your career by breaking your playmate's head against the curb. Because he had a painted tin horse and you wanted to get it. Well, I got it. Oh, I grant that. You made a glorious straight path by knocking down anyone who came across it. Or tried to turn you off it. The foundation of Lingley Limited was laid when you stole the plans of a turbine engine. And let the inventor die of poverty. Come on, off you go. I'll appeal. There's no appeal. You'll suffer as you made others suffer. Give me a second chance. Did you give anybody a second chance? That's all. Take him away, Scrubby. Yes, sir. Just see it goes the right way. Very good, sir. I wish you'd see the young couple next, sir. 
Henry and Anne, I, I know they must be suffering. Well, what couple is this? They're not on the passenger list. They seem so devoted. But who exactly are they? Stuart, do you know anything about a young couple uh, on the boat? Oh, uh, those two, sir. Uh, you wouldn't want to see them. Not see them? They are halfways, sir. Oh, halfways. Well, that explains it. No, it wouldn't be much use to see them. Show in Mrs. Cliveden Banks. <laughs> Thompson, Thompson, surely not one of the Berkshire Thompsons. Not that I'm aware of. What a pity. My great-great-grandfather was a Berkshire Thompson. My great-great-grandfather was hanged for horse thieving. Very how quaint. You play golf? I play in different I think all men ought to play golf. It keeps them away from home. <laughs> My husband, Colonel Clyburn Banks, is quite an expert, I believe. Oh, yes, Bunny's quite hot stuff. I was having a round with Bunny not long ago. But I, I don't understand. Is he here? He's waiting for you. No. How did he get here? Poor old Bunny died a couple of months ago. Benjamin and I are both dead then? Quite dead. That makes the marriage null and void. Your marriage is only just beginning. Oh, how droll you are. You'll find everything most comfortable ashore. Valet, servants all your own. And your husband waiting with outstretched arms. How ghastly. What right has he got to pop up again after all this time? Every right. We're glad to have him here. Your husband is a very useful man. Oh, how well I know that phrase. It's always been used of Bunny in every new office and every new job. Later, he invariably got sacked. And you know why? Because of his wife's malicious tongue. How dare he you? He was a devoted husband. Look what he gave you. And what did you give in return? Nothing. But he looked so funny. The only funny thing about him is that he wants to see you. Why he should want to see you is beyond me, but he does and he's going to. Oh, what shall I be exactly? You'll be his wife. In time, you'll learn to be a good wife. No, I refuse. You Absolutely. Can't refuse. I, I won't do it. I won't. I won't. And why not? He knows. Ask him. It was his eyes. That look in his eyes. You know I couldn't face them anymore. Yes, you never could look him in the eyes. But remember, Mrs. Cliveden Banks, it won't be Bunny who will know now. It'll be you and I and the servants. And everybody except Bunny. You'll have forgotten. Servants, you say? Well, well, I suppose it might be worse. I'll go. Of course you will. For his sake. Yes, I see it is my duty. <laughs> Ah, duty, duty. Such a compelling thing. Uh, perhaps you'll both come and dine with the colonel and me one night. Um, goodbye, Mr. Tomkins. You swine. You've got to take me next. I can't stand it. My nerves aren't right. I can't stand it. Well, we're not going to hurt you. Here, drink this. Well, what do you want? I want to be killed. I want to be killed. Well, healthy outlook you've got, haven't you? No, I haven't. I've got a weak character. I want to be let off light. I want to be hit over the head with a stone and be finished. Duke, send a show for a bag of stones. Don't joke. I couldn't stand that. I know what you're doing with the others. You're keeping them going with promises and things. Well, I don't want to be kept going. I want... blank. Impossible. But I'm dead. I demand the right to be properly dead. You're going on like the others. You've got to. I won't. You find it quite easy to forget here, you know? Easy to forget what? You're not... You're not suggesting I'm to go on without this. Yes. Torturer. I see what you want me to do. You want me to chuck drink and develop a nice clean life and remember all the other horrors. Why don't you kill me? Look at all the trouble it'll save. I'm not really worth saving. I'm not really. Excuse me, sir. What do you want? Uh, my name is Midget, sir. I couldn't help you. Either. Oh, yes, I know all about you. It's not your turn yet. Oh, but you see, sir, young Mr. Pryor here, he's been very kind to me. And if he's in trouble... I really don't think I could put me head on my pillow tonight if I had one. Oh, now, Mr. Pryor, what's all the flustering to do? It's about the booze, ain't it? Yes, drink is certainly mixed up in it. Mind you, I don't say there's any harm in a man having a beer if he wants it. But I shouldn't think you did ever had much of a chance, have you, sir? I've had every chance, Mrs. Mitchett. 
I was spoiled. I was ungrateful. I ruined... Now, oh, please drop it. Oh, there was a girl, too, wasn't there? And she was the final old elder you do, I take it. As you so poetically express it, she was. And she chucked you, didn't she? Oh, but you'll be different now. What a triumph for you if your girl suddenly appeared here and found you settled down, smart and respectable like, with a good job and a decent salary, regular every Saturday. What you want is a nice, good, steady, respectable housekeeper who'll take care of Mrs. you. Mrs. Midget. Oh, you can have your drinks as long as you don't let him interfere with your meals and affect your appetite. Mrs. Midget, you're suggesting that... Uh, I, I was thinking of it, yes. It would mean going back to the slums. And what's the matter with the slums? They're all right. I won't listen to the idea. Oh, you can give me a week's notice. Won't it be worth a try, sir? Look, please don't keep on calling me sir. I'm not a gentleman, really. Aren't you, sir? No, I'm not. If I were, I shouldn't be hesitating as I am. Mr. Examiner, you help me. You must be experienced in making decisions. No, my boy. I can't help you in this. It's your own choice. Look, Duke, I... You know what Mr. Thompson said. For you to speak. Very well, then. I'll go. By myself. Prior, I'm not worth bothering about. And in those very words, you proved you are. Because you really mean them. Humility, my boy. Humility. Take him away, Mrs. Uh, What's your name? And do the best you can. Uh, wait, I, I, I haven't finished my drink. Your drink, sir. All right. All right. I'm going. Just a moment, ma'am. Oh, he'll be waiting for me. That's all right, Mrs. Pryor. You're a good mother. Blast you. How did you find out? Blast you. No. Please. You'll never tell him, will you? Promise. You'll never let him know. I promise. And you, Reverend. I promise, of course. I just felt. You see, he mustn't even guess. Oh, sir, ain't it wonderful? He doesn't know me, and I've got him to look after at last, without any fear of me disgracing him. It's heaven. That's what it is. It's heaven. Mrs. Midget. He wants me. At last. Yes, dearie. I'm coming. I'm coming. Well, that does it. Come along, Duke. No, wait, Thompson. The young couple is still outside. You may come in now. Oh. This... Is this the young couple? Oh, <laughs> Won't you speak to them? Please. Not yet, my children. Henry! Henry, where are you? Henry! Here I am. Oh, we've sailed again. Yes, darling. Why have we both been left behind? I don't know. Where does it mean we're going? I don't like the sea. But oh, we should keep close. Terribly close. Oh, and why weren't we judged? I don't know. Why did you leave me? Shh. I thought I heard a dog bark. Something seemed to touch my hand. <laughs> Listen. You hear the noise of that glass? Glass breaking. Do you hear it? No, dear. Where are we going to now? Oh, I can't think. Ever since we left the harbor, I've felt bound for some place I know. And, and I feel a breeze. Light, like a, like a breath of new air. We're together. That's all that matters. We're together. Oh, darling, they can't separate us now, can they? Keep hold of me, darling. Don't let me go. Why aren't we closer? I thought we would be when we were dead. Oh, suppose after all we were wrong. Wrong? What was that? 
And... Oh, who's the steward? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. And I heard it. The dog is barking. Oh, don't be silly. What dog? Listen. Listen, I heard it, Anne. I, I heard it. I heard it. Be close to him, miss, if you'll take my advice. Where are we going? Uh, we just go on like this. Forwards and backwards. Backwards and forwards. It happens to all halfways like we are. Halfways? We are the people who ought to have had more courage. For what? To uh, face life. Do you remember how you became a halfway? Oh, no, I've been allowed to forget. I hope you'll be allowed to forget. It would be too cruel if they didn't let you forget in time that you killed yourself. And I remember. I remember. We, we thought we'd forget. And that we'd be so happy forever. But now it's all over. We killed ourselves, but we're not happy. Why did you do it? We weren't married. He had a wife. Oh, and we should have waited. Yes. Scrubby, you don't know the agony we've been through. The way people talk, the things they've said. And now, you, you see, we have to remember. Now, the last thing I saw was Jock's face against the window. Oh, poor dog, poor Jock. Oh, if, if we were only given back a little time. Time to try again. It's too late now. No. No, there must be a way out. Let me think. The air is fresher outside. If, if I could only think. Don't let him go too far, madam. Call him now. Henry, don't go too far away. No, no, dear. Scrubby, why aren't people kinder to each other? Being unkind comes more naturally to most people, I'm afraid. Are you very lonely, Scrubby? Oh, no, ma'am, not on the old. You'll find lots of new friends, ma'am. The birds come on board occasionally, and there's the sea. Call him again. Call him, why? He won't be far from me. Call him. Henry? Henry? Henry. He's gone. Henry! He lives again. Lives? The dog man outside the window. Perhaps he broke through and let in the flesh ear. Oh, he wouldn't leave me alone. He couldn't help himself, ma'am. Oh, we've been dead a week. A week, a century. There's no time here. He's gone back, ma'am. Then I'll go too. That's impossible. Henry! Impossible. Henry, where are you? It's Anne. Where are you? Quick, darling, quickly. There's only a second or two. I've come to fetch you home. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Oh, we've got such a lot to do and so little time to do it. Quickly, darling, quickly. We're going to live again, Anne. Breathe deeply. Oh, yes, fresh. We're going to live again. Anne, we're going to live again. have just heard the best plays production of Outward Bound by Sutton Vane. And here again is your host, drama critic John Chapman. Next Sunday's best play will be another change of pace in this series, a melodrama. It is Thomas Job's thriller, Uncle Harry, with Joseph Schildkraut again in the role he created on Broadway. This is Chapman saying goodbye until then. Outward Bond was adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in tonight's cast were Gina Dare as Mrs. Midget, Alexander Scorby as Tom Pryor, Chester Stratton as Henry, Susan Douglas as Anne, Leona Powers as Mrs. Clyde and Banks, John Stanley as Mr. Lingley, Norman Rose as the Reverend William Duke, Wendell Holmes as the Reverend Dr. Thompson, and William Podmore as Scrubby the Steward. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. This is Fred Collins speaking. And this... Tonight, be sure to hear the American Forum of the Air on NBC.